Hi, Attorney Steve Vondren, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Litigation Whiteboard. Okay, back by popular demand. I told you it was coming back this year in 2019, and here we are. Now, this is general legal information only and not legal advice, but this episode is a special one. It's out for one of my good buds. He has just hired a new associate, a three-year associate in the law, but he did a lot of transactional work. Boring. Ugh, a lot of transactional. Now he wants to get into litigation. So we're going to do in this video a special one called litigation crash course. Okay, so we're going to talk to you about just the general overview of litigation. So if you're new to litigation, you're a new uh, somebody right out of law school or somebody making a lateral switch from transactional work. And I'm just joking about the transactional. I do some contract work, which is which is kind of fun and rewarding. But litigation is where it's at. It's a lot, a lot of fun. It can be fast paced, depending on how many cases you have. And you get to go to court and do things like that, things that people like to do. A lot of people that are being lawyers like to do. So without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard. All right, let's back it up here. So I got my uh, little yardstick here to help us through, but I have jotted down what I would consider some of the main things to be thinking about when you're litigating a case. Now, you don't have to be a lawyer. This could be for improper persons as well, but let's take a look here. So your first thing is right here on our timeline. This is our timeline. You can see some of the main events with the X's. So let's take a look. Demand letter. So something happens over here. Something happens. Here's your boxing gloves. Something happens. Two parties are mad at each other. They try to work it out and they just can't seem to work it out. So one person hires a lawyer or they just send a demand letter. So next thing, first thing usually on the timeline is a dispute, some kind of demand and they can't resolve it. So it usually will escalate in, in that event to a complaint. This is a formal complaint. It could be arbitration. You may be subject to an arbitration clause, something that puts you over here into ADR. Now, this is part of litigation as well because you have situations where maybe you're fight, the parties are fighting over a contract and the contract says that all disputes must be arbitrated. So in that event, we're over here down in arbitration land. And as part of arbitration, you could have mediation as an initial uh, prerequisite, or it can just go you go right straight to a binding arbitration. So you have to read your contracts carefully. Sometimes over here we have motions to compel arbitration. That could be part of a litigator's thing. Uh, but let's just assume there's no arbitration clause and you have either a state or a federal issue and you want to get into court. Okay, so here's where everything starts, of course, with the complaint and the summons. Let's check that off there. A complaint really is a short and plain statement of the facts that outlines what the grievance is, you know, some general background facts about the case, things that you know, and lays out some causes of action. You say, you know, they violated this, they violated this, they violated this. So you're laying out your causes of action and your request for relief. What do you want? What do you want out of the litigation? Money damages, attorney fees, injunctions, what are you looking for? Okay, so there's your complaint, your summons, and we have it. By the way, when I when I tell you about this, we have a video on complaint. We have a video on summons. You're going to have to go through our channel. Make sure you subscribe to our channel because you want to make sure you're getting all these little pieces. I'm going in depth on my videos. Okay, so you're going to have your complaint, your summons, any exhibits that you might have to support your causes of action. And check your cover sheet rules. Like I have found, we've litigated up and down the state of California from Sacramento on down to San Diego, San Fran, LA, everything in between, Newport Beach, and also in Phoenix. But you always wanna check and see if they have a special cover sheet requirement. Usually you can go to the court's website and find out if they have some special cover sheet. Sometimes they get real upset, the clerks, if you don't have your cover sheet so uh, you don't want to trust me you don't want to get on the last day of a statute of limitations and you forget that there's not a cut there's you need a cover sheet and the clerk doesn't want to accept it boom now you just blew the statute call your malpractice your insurance carrier so let's hope that doesn't happen so you have your summons and your complaint you got it all ready to go what do you do next step service of process sop service of process you have to put the other party on notice 
or other parties, you may have multiple defendants. So you have to put them on notice of your lawsuit, okay? And you do that by serving it. Usually the best way to do it, to get it done with, is personally serve. You hire a company, they go out there. Somebody who's over 18 and not a party to an action can go ahead and serve that. So you have your service of process, sometimes substitute service. Substitute service will also work, giving it to someone of mature years, someone of mature years, as they say, likely to give it to the person who's um, entitled to it. There's other ways you can serve corporations through their registered agents. So I'm not going to go into that in depth. I am going to be doing another video on service of process to get down to the nitty gritties. But you have to serve them and you file a proof of service with the court. Okay, that way the court knows they've been served. If you don't file a proof of service, you may get an order to show cause, what we call an OSC, order to show cause why you didn't serve them. If you can't show a good valid reason, judge may dismiss the case. Yes, it gets harsh. You know, this is the big leagues now. We're not talking, uh, you know, small claims, you know, stuff here. So, uh, but you have certain time frames to respond. Once, the, once a party receives the service of process, the proof is filed, a party will have a limited amount of time to respond, okay? Now, there's different ways to respond. You may respond with saying, you know, let's just file an answer. We, we will deny, specifically, generally deny all the allegations, and let's just move it into litigation the other alternative is to file what's called a motion to dismiss if you're in federal court. It's called a motion to dismiss. Rule 12B is your relevant rule. If you're in state court, you're looking at the demur. Demur, okay? And so the demur usually challenges defects on the face of the complaint. Defects on the facial pleading of the complaint. Now, it doesn't go to the facts. You're, it's not summary judgment motion which we'll talk about here. It's going only to the face of the complaint saying on its face, there are defects in the way that this was pled. So again, that's a different video. I think I have a, a videos on these. You're gonna have to check. I believe I did those, uh, but let's go back to the answer real quick. So say you choose, probably the more common route is, is the, because uh, the problem with the demur is you file the demur, the, maybe you pointed out a defect and the party gets to amend and they get to clean it up and everything else. So that there may be needs for that too. And don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that's not the right thing to do, but more commonly, I would say you're going to find an answer. Okay. When you raise your answer, do not forget to raise your affirmative defenses. We have a, a page dedicated to this. We've got videos on the various, <coughs> excuse me, on the various affirmative defenses. And there's a bunch of them. I mean, maybe there's over 100, 200. There's a ton of affirmative defenses. So you really want to make sure you're raising those. The rule, the general rule is if you don't waive, raise your defenses, you waive them. Raise or waive. So you need to be careful. Now there's ways to amend your complaint. There's ways to amend the, the complaint. That would be your first amended complaint, second amended complaint, so forth, third amended complaint. This is why litigation can take some time because they can amend their complaint. You can amend your answers. You can amend your affirmative defenses. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and one of the other things to consider when you're responding is the counterclaims. You may have a counterclaim against one or more parties and, you know, somebody else may have, um, you know, the plaintiff, for example, may have done something that caused you damages in the same process. So maybe you want to get your damages recovered at the same time. So this is when you want to file the package right there. That's a good defendant package right there. Answer, affirmative defenses, and if you have any counterclaims. Now, again, these are usually, I'm just gonna tell you some inside stuff, but these are usually, you know, good faith, notice pleading, you just put people on notice. But I've been in federal court sometimes where they want to file a demur or a motion to strike on your affirmative defenses. And you're just going like, wow, I'm just raising my defenses. And they say, well, you're not being specific enough. And I've been through this hassle with the courts and stuff and whatnot. But on affirmative defenses, I would say sprinkle in enough facts so that they know what you're talking about. If you say, um, you know, if you say it's unclean hands, for example, this is a common one, unclean hands as an affirmative defense. 
have, sprinkle some facts in there so they know because you don't want to just get a, a, a demur and somebody saying or rule 11 motion or something where they say, you know, there's no grounds to bring this. And you're going like, I'm just trying to raise my my affirmative defenses. So that's one thing. Just give them enough so they know what your affirmative defense relates to. That's just my experience. So now that's if they respond, let's say California State Court, for example, um, where I litigate quite a bit, 30 days, 30 days to respond to the complaint and the summons, okay? Um, if you don't answer, a lot of times I'm going to switch it, switch the markers here so it doesn't get all convoluted. A lot of times people will ask me, well, what happens if I don't answer? Well, that's what I have right here. This is your default judgment and default is you take your chances. So if you don't answer the complaint, you take your chances. Um, you waive any right to object on the merits. You lose your rights to object on the merits of the case. So you are stuck. I mean, it's a question of what the damages are. Now the judge has to find the cause of action plausible. You know, it has to, has to actually make sense. But for the most part, you're looking at money damages and all you can do is maybe say, you know, judge, no way they suffered a million dollars in damages. But you can't say, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I couldn't afford a lawyer. It doesn't work. Okay. So you have your default judgments. There's a whole nother topic. And I have a good video on default the difference between a default and a default judgment. I'm not going to go into that right now, but it's two different things. Um, and set aside. Sometimes you're at this point and things have already gone on and you need to set aside the default. Set aside the default again. I think I have a video on that. Go check it out. So that's really kind of the intro. I would call that the intro of the case. Maybe we call that phase one. Okay. Um, if you're in federal court, the other thing to know is there's some early disclosure rules. I'm not going to go too much into that. There's early disclosure rules, Rule 26, scheduling conferences. You may have issues picking magistrate judges or consenting to that or not consenting to that, whatever. But I'm not going to go into that. So that's fate, to me, that's phase one of a lawsuit, kickstarting it, getting it off the ground. And let's go into, I'll call this phase two. Okay. Um, this is discovery. Now we're going into, we're past the complaint. There may have been a demur, a first amended complaint. There may have been a demur, a second amended complaint. So who knows? This can take some time. This doesn't necessarily happen in two days or anything. So, but by the time we're all done with that, we move into what I call the discovery phase. And I'm just going to take that right up to, let's take that probably like right up to here. Let's take that like right up to here, okay? So I'm going to come right down here. Phase two, this is your discovery. Now, discovery really is just trying to find out what the facts are in a case. Uh, who did what? Who said what? What documents were exchanged? You know, who dropped the, the bag of cement on the other? Who's your employee? You know, what company do you have insurance? It's all the fact finding. It's the fact finding that you're trying to get, you're trying to corroborate your allegations. So you make all these allegations up here. You're trying to corroborate them through your discovery. And ultimately, if you go to trial, which I'll call stage three, you need to be able to prove, prove your facts, meeting the burden of proof. We have a video on burden of proof. Okay, so you need to meet in civil cases. Usually it's, it's by a preponderance of the evidence, criminal court beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay, but anyway, we're talking about civil cases here. So let's get back. You have one, two, three, four, five. I would just say five main forms of discovery, but this is not an exclusive list. These are what I would call the big five, okay? So you have form interrogatories. Note though, you don't have those in federal court. This is a state court deal, okay? Form interrogatory, and I'm speaking of California generally. You need to check your own rules again. This is general legal information only and not legal advice. Check the own, your own rules in your own state and different rules may vary. Um, but you have form interrogatories. They're basically pre-printed, just a bunch of documents. They're pre-printed with a bunch of questions. You check the boxes, okay? So it's really easy to ask a bunch of questions. You know, how, what, what, tell me about the, tell me where the incident happened. Do you have any objections? Were there contracts? You know, these kinds of things. So you check the boxes, you serve them over to the other party. Remember, you gotta serve everything when you're in litigation. You got to be sure to serve everybody, everything. You're serving the defendants. You're ser serving the plaintiffs. You're serving, if there's co-defendants, co-parties, you're serving them all every time. 
Um, but what I've found is helpful is if you can try to get an agreement to serve things by email. If the other party agrees, get that in writing, then you can serve things by email, okay? But not unless you do that. Um, so that's a good tip. Um, form interrogatories is one. Next one is special interrogatories. This is, you know, this is great because you get to ask questions under oath, meaning they have to, they have to meet with their, they don't have to meet with their lawyer, but they usually do meet with their lawyer or discuss with their lawyer, come up with their responses, you know, write them down and they have to swear to it under penalty of perjury that the, the facts that the answers are giving are true. Now, in these documents, of course, one party can object. The other party, it could be a big old fight about whether the, the question is vague, ambiguous, whether it's relevant, all these kinds of things. But you have special interrogatories, and there may also be limits on special interrogatories. Federal court, 25. Okay. Um, you also have requests for admissions. This is really where you're saying, admit you were on top of the building uh, on this date. Admit. You were working with cement. Admit the bag of cement fell off the roof. Admit uh, this is your employee. Admit your employee was the last person seen with the cement. It's admit or deny. Admit or deny. So you're asking these questions. If you find out they're lying on something and you can prove that, you can try to go get sanctions, monetary sanctions and whatnot. Okay, so that's request for admissions number three. Number four, RFP, request for production, production of documents, request to inspect documents. Okay. You want to see, I want all your policies and procedure manuals. I want all your contracts. I want a copy of your licenses, you know, those kinds of things, written documents. Um, I want the, a complete copy of the loan file. I want this. I want that. I want to see, copy and inspect all your documents. So this is request for production. I believe I have a video on that if you're interested. Um, and then finally, number five, is subpoena. Now, subpoena is the great thing. It's as an attorney, you're basically filling out, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big long statement that you make of the things you're looking for. Say you're um, litigating against, you know, Microsoft or something. You say, oh, I want all the licenses. I want, you know, I want all the documents. If you're subpoenaing Google, I want all the emails that are stored for this person. So you're listing what you want. That's being served. Once again, everything's being served. There are times when these documents are being served that you have to give a notice to consumer. This is a big deal because if you don't do it, you're wasting time. Notice to consumer. I'm not going to go into it on this video. Just plug it in your mind. The notice of consumer gives somebody a chance to object to your subpoena. Okay. I'm not going to go into subpoenas here. I have videos on subpoenas if you want to go watch them. Um, when we get into subpoenas, we're talking also about motion to quash. We're also talking about protective orders being possible. Uh, our firm does a lot of torrent lawsuits with like strike three holdings in Malibu Media. These issues come up with subpoenas and things like that, okay? Um, so there is your discovery. You go through all this process. If you have problems with discovery, two parties are fighting or sandbagging, which happens. Um, there's a meet and confer process. You have to put all your objections down in writing, send it over to the other side. You can go back and forth, phone calls, try to figure out, reduce your requirements or reduce what you're looking for or clarify the meanings of words, those kinds of things. But this is your meet and confer process. Again, this is things that you put in writing, follow up phone calls, emails, so you're documenting as attorneys. We're always documenting the things we do. We want these things in writing, okay? So, you know, number one, our clients want to see them. Um, number two, if you go, end up going into court, trial date, you need, you need the documents. You need to have some evidence, okay? Um, things orally over the phone, he said, she said, red light, green light. Nobody likes that. Doesn't, doesn't help you. And finally, if the meet and confer doesn't work, you go down, you have motions to compel, Okay. Um, a really good video that I'm going to recommend if you haven't seen it is I have a video on Attorney Steve Law and Motion. I would recommend you see that. Talks a little bit more in here. You can tend to have different motions being filed by different parties. Um, so check that out. But um, Attorney, <coughs> Attorney Steve's um, Law and Motion. Very, very helpful video if you're new to the litigation field. All right. So there's your discovery. Now... Usually, I would say usually it doesn't have to go this way. Usually parties like to do their discovery first 
and then take the deposition. To me, the deposition is the best tool. Why? Because you get to see somebody face to face. You can put a video camera on them if you give them the proper notice. Um, but it allows you to assess the credibility and decide how a jury would actually perceive somebody as a, either a good witness, shaky witness, bad witness. Um, I mean, trust me that, and we have a great video on depositions, deposition tips, attorney Steve's depot tips. Go check that out. Another great, important video. So depositions come up and people can change their testimony. They give it a deposition. So that's depots. Um, and you can de take the deposition of parties, non-parties. And, you know, sometimes it can be more difficult when you have out of, out of state parties, but that's going to be saved for another video. So you have your discovery, your depositions. This is all phase two, and then usually buried in here, usually buried in here, in here in this process is your CMC, your case management conferences. Um, you have to put out a CMC statement, a, case, a CMC case management statement, 15 days before the hearing. And um, you have a hearing basically, it's kind of like status on the case, telling the judge all the parties file them, there is a meet and confer, requirement in that all the uh, the you know parties are supposed to meet discuss the issues if there's any issues but you put down your you put down your issues you put down if there's any parties that haven't been served if there's any um, additional parties that need to be added if there's any additional motions you think are going to be brought so you're how many tr days for trial you're just letting the judge know kind of where you're coming from so the judge can decide uh, where you're at in the case and whether we need to move forward, slow it down, speed it up, so forth, okay? So you have your depots, your CMCs, and then right around here, and again, this can vary. Some people will do depots first. Some people will do very minimal discovery and just go right into the depots. Um, some people, you may have mediation over here. The parties may agree to an early mediation, but mediation is, again, a form of alternative dispute resolution, Many times this is going to be a part of a case. And many times it's a great opportunity to settle your case in mediation. And again, for more tips on mediation, I have a separate video on mediation if you want to take a deep dive. Okay. Um, and so there from here, you know, if things can't get settled, you may have more discovery looming, looming out here. Usually there's discovery looming out here while the mediation is ongoing but you may have a motion for summary judgment, okay? This is where you've gathered the evidence and one party is telling the judge, judge, there's no triable issue of fact here. There is no reason why we should spend time taking this to a trial. There's no reason we need to impanel a jury. We don't need to waste all our time doing that. Let's give me judgment, summary judgment as a matter of law, summary judgment. So these are big these are big, beefy um, briefing requirements, memorandums of points and authorities, declarations, exhibits, requests for judicial notice. All you put, up, you pull out all the all the tricks and goodies for this one because you want to win that. So you may have one party seeking summary judgment. There may be parties seeking both seeking summary judgment. So this is again a big, hairy deal, and this is where parties can spend a lot of money in litigation because there's a lot of requirements. This is it. You know, you can kill the case right here. So that can be a real big deal. Um, also, you have over here, if you can't get your, say the judge says, you know, um, summary judgment denied, case is going to keep moving. It's going to keep moving down this timeline like a train on the tracks. Okay, so it just keeps on moving down. Um, you may have a mandatory settlement conference in here where the judge says you have to be here and right around here we're also you know we're in here we're talking about I, I didn't put it your experts your experts are going to be retained in here um, they're going to be they're going to have their depositions taken so forth and so on so I didn't I didn't have that in here but that should be in here um, you may so after your summary judgment you may have settlement conferences pre-trial we have motion in limine I have MIL motion in limine that's where you're trying to exclude evidence. Your their motions you file to the court saying, I don't want this evidence in. And if this evidence gets in, it's prejudicial. It's going to hurt my client. So you have motions in limine and you have a trial. So if none of this works and you can't settle, and some people will say, well, what's the, attorney Steve, what's the best time to settle? And I say, well, anytime, anytime you, you get your deal you're looking for or you get a fair deal, something you can live with, um, Anytime is a good time to settle. You can be talking settlement throughout the process here, okay? 
Um, but you, if you don't, you're in trial, case can settle. You've heard of cases settling on the courthouse steps. That's what they were, they're talking to, talking about. Um, and then once your trial goes down, there's a verdict. You can have post-trial motions like for judgment notwithstanding the verdict. Lots of different things. I'm not going to go into it. And then you have appeal with the losing party. Um, has a chance to appeal the case to the next level, whatever that is. In federal court, that's the Court of Appeals. Um, in state court, it's your, your, uh, your, your Municipal Superior Court of Appeals, okay? So that's a general litigation crash course right there. Um, is it everything? No, it's not everything. But if you're new to litigation, this is, this is my general roadmap that I'm sharing with you. To in the attempts to hope that you understand, and this is for my clients too. We get into litigation. Sometimes people don't know what the process is or what they can expect. This is kind of kind of what you can expect here. Um, how they're going to go down. There's a lot of little. There's so many legal maneuvers that can pop up during this process um, that I can't go into right now. Just to try to keep this. I'm trying like heck to keep this video under 30 minutes. But um, that's it. That's litigation crash course. So if that looks, sounds like something that's fun for you, then litigation, you want to put those boxing gloves on right there, then litigation may be great for you. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Attorney Steve. Again, general legal information only. You also have to always remember to check your court rules, the rules of your court or your judge, because you have your, in California, for example, you have your California rules of court which are going to apply, excuse me there. You have your California rules of court that are going to apply, but also your local rules, okay? So think about all the legal things that are going into this, your, your, your local rules. In federal court, you're going to have local rules, okay? You're going to have your state case law. You're going to have your statutes. So there's a lot of, this is more of the procedural. There's a lot of substantive side to everything, but this will give you an idea about the, the um procedural site. Also here, again, I'm going to put, I have venue venue here at the very beginning. You always want to make sure that you're in the right court venue. And there's also removal way up there, way up high, if you can see that. I'll point to it with my little yardstick venue and removal. So this is where a case can be removed from state court to federal court, something that you think about at the early part of the case. So I hope this has been helpful. If you've enjoyed it, Man, come on, I'm working hard here. And give me a like, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions, realize I cannot give legal advice on the internet. I'm not allowed to do it per my ethical rules. But this is, I hope this has been helpful for you. I know the lighting isn't perfect. I'm working on it this year. But um, again, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have more questions, need more information, you can find me here at vondrenlegal.com or even easier attorneysteve.com, attorneysteve.com, the first name in legal services. I hope that's been helpful. Have a great uh, Martin Luther King Day coming up tomorrow. So everybody have a great uh, holiday if you're taking a holiday. And if not, have a great week. Bye now.